Welcome to Banana Bread Trades. Here we talk about trading futures. Shit post on Discord, post dank memes. And most importantly, eat banana bread and make money. Welcome everyone to Banana Bread Trades. My name is Goose and welcome to another episode of today's recap and tomorrow's trade plan. Today was absolutely effing wild. Once again, this range proved to be an absolute mother hacker and we traversed both sides of it again except this time we broke out of both sides of it so let's hop right into what happened today we start off overnight we talked about this yesterday because we were watching as we got this breakout last night that we would probably gap up on the overnight above the range which that is exactly what we did however we gapped up a lot and i mean on ES, we gapped up what? That's 48 all the way up to 67. I mean, we gapped up a good 30 points on ES and then another 200 points on NQ as well. NQ had a huge gap. So that was something that we took note of. And right off the bat, right before open, we started selling. And then at open, we sold hard. But this was to be expected. We talked about this last night with there being a potential liquidity glass liquidity grab if we gapped up overnight just to go fill back in that volume retest that range and then we would make a decision on if that range was going to hold and we we're going to continue upwards or if it was going to be a look above and fail and then break the bottom of the bottom side of the range and we got one hell of some volatility there in the middle of the range we talked about our pivot being 53 33 being the line in the sand and I mean, we sold off really hard. We sliced right through it. We didn't take any longs. We were patient. We actually shorted right out of open because of the sell volume that we got. And we, you know, we had a pretty good idea of where we were going to go head to with QQQ, especially <clears throat> having such a large overnight gap. We had a pretty good idea of, you know, we were going to get at least this 5333 level. So we shorted that opening range breakout breakdown, I guess. Um, and then we took, we got a nice short trade out of that. And then came this whole pivot situation, which I played relatively poorly. So I'll show my trade here as well. Let me pull it up. You can always find my trade plans and trades in the goose section of our discord. I post them in verified as well. So let's talk about what we did today. As far as our trades, we took that opening range short. I mean, this is the one minute opening range. The, the, Trading version of Quantower I use doesn't use the 30 second, but the AMP one does, which is the one I watch all day. So we caught the short out of the 30 second opening range breakdown. And then we were just holding. And then I actually got out when we tried to break back up above that 5330 level, our pivot. And I was actually getting ready to get into a long. So I took that short, got out of our short, and got ready to long if that level was going to hold. However, because I really thought it was going to, however, it ended up not holding. We broke right back down. I was like, okay, well, <clears throat> I'm going to sit here and wait for a second because and see if we get the break down or if we're going to get, you know, a, a retest. And it came up, tried to retest. And I was like, all right, if it takes highs, if it takes this high and holds, then I'll get into this long. It did not take the high and ended up selling. And then we broke the lows and we broke initial balance low in which I was ready for a big sell-off. I was ready for this move. This was the move I was expecting. However, and this is how I played it too, with the breakout down below, I had my stop high enough that if we kind of tried to push back in, we would be okay. However, buyers stepped in aggressively hard. I mean, very hard. And I ended up taking a stop on that play. And I knew the risk, so I had a pretty tight stop. at a five-point stop on that. So we ended up being okay as far as, like, you know, where we were on the day. We were still green on the day. And then we ended up coming back up to this 53-33 level. I ended up getting into a really light long because of the strength of these buyers. We were holding this level, and it really looked like buyers were about to, you know, break out and take off, which they did. But I was long very light. And then they broke out above 53.33, our pivot, came back down to retest our pivot, 
our pivot held the retest, so we longed with more leverage. We got up here to about 53.40, where we were supposed to kind of bust those highs, and it looked really weak. And in this moment, I went ahead and killed my long, my core position on my long for, it was about nine points, not quite the full 10 that I like to get at least out of a core position. Most of the time, I really like to get 20 points, but in this situation, things were a little bit volatile, a little bit scary. So I went ahead and took my core position off a little early <clears throat> and then just held a couple runners. We ended up selling really hard. My runners got stopped out. So that trade was overall green. We had two overall green trades and then this one stop out. So we were actually sitting okay on the day. It wasn't a fantastic day by any means. You know, we didn't get any runners to run, but it wasn't, you know, a bad day either. And this original short, this was very light. It was only just a couple MES. But then we get this massive sell-off. And I should have shorted on this breakdown of 53.33. But I honestly, once I took profit on this core, I set my stop. And I went to go grab lunch. And this thing was already gone by the time I got back. So I missed this entire short. And in reality, I really should have shorted this. I mean, this was completely on our plan that we talked about yesterday, that if 53.33 does not hold, does not, you know, reclaim and then hold, we would flip short. That is exactly what happened here. I didn't take the short. I wasn't a charts. It doesn't matter. I should have stayed around, watched this setup, and I missed it. I missed a really big play right here. So I'm a little bit mad at myself for that because that was, I mean, we talked about this play for like the last week. So a little bummed on myself for missing it. We made the most out of the situation that we could um, because I really thought this was actually the breakdown of 53.33 and I was catching the short there. Didn't happen. Oh, well. Could have caught it there. Didn't. Oh, well. And we break all the way down to 52.75. And what have we talked about all week? That we're going to wait for 52.75 to get wicked, which it did, barely, but it got wicked. And it held, so we ended up getting long. And we held our long all the way into close. Um, buyers just really weren't that strong into close. I thought we would kind of react a little bit more there, you know, with the remaining part of the day. We didn't. That's okay. We got 10 points out of our core, and I just killed my runner a little bit after close because I was not going to hold these trades through close because these are on the Apex accounts, not my swing account which actually ended up taking uh, my runners got stopped out on my swing account from the long we were in yesterday because we took that long at like 53.20-ish, 53.19-ish yesterday based on our plan. But that swing account ended up, like I said, we got out of most of our core position on that and I had one or two runners. They ended up dying on this big massive sell. So Sucks for those, but also, like I said, that's just part of the game. We knew the risks. So going back over to our charts here, the plan is actually in play right now as far as the 5275. I should have taken this in my swing account, kind of kicking myself for not doing that. So original trade plan is gone. We can go ahead and delete that green line. This trade is dead. The the 5333 pivot, we're in full short mode. We, you know, we talked about that short we didn't take the short we botched it but now we're on trade plan number two which is the wick of this 5275 level and then to chase all-time highs and this is kind of we're down to these last two long possibilities before we start considering that we're in a bear market and how are we going to know that we're in a bar bear market that's when 5244 straight up dies if we lose that level at 5250 5240 if we lose that and fail to reclaim, then we are definitely confirmed in a bear market, in my opinion. So for now, this is just profit taking and a relief pullback, although the look above and fail of this multi-day range is slightly concerning. So what, what are we going to do or how are we planning for tomorrow? Well, we sold off pretty hard. We got a pretty nice volume gap here. And I say volume gap, there is volume there, just not a lot because we sold off so fast. But we sold off really hard, left this volume gap and have a good distribution area down here around 52.80, 52.75, where we talked about taking this long. And it's holding thus far. But 
the thing is we're going to have to have quite a bit of buying to actually buy back up through this volume. And if we have that buying, then we will consider taking shorts in this 53.20 to 53.33 area. So we still have our pivot here at 53.33. If we were to end up buying up to here, which I could see happening, I would possibly consider taking another short. I honestly wouldn't be against taking shorts here at 5294, 5300 ish, just because of the, it's the top of this distribution zone where this volume is taking place. We could also range down here for quite a while. I don't really expect a good trend up overnight that far unless something crazy happens in the London session. So for me right now, it's really going to come down to does 5275 hold? And I don't necessarily have a bias either way if it does or doesn't. What I want to see happen now is a little bit of structure form. And if a little bit of structure forms, that might give us a little bit better idea of what to do tomorrow morning, which I'll talk about in Discord and I'll tweet about as well. But we put a lot of volume up here at 53.33. I mean a lot of volume. So the rotation down to the next high volume node of 52.46 and kind of developing this range right here definitely makes sense. Very similar to the range that we had here. So if we could kind of get that range up here, I would be okay with that. And that's why I really like longs at that 5240 level, because that would be a nice bottom of a range and kind of range and fill volume between these two nodes. Then we would have a nice double distribution type, you know, area here. But I mean, that's just all going to have to depend on if 5244 holds. So that's really all I'm looking for right now. So not really a, a solid trade right now. I guess you could say it's more of kind of letting some structure form. If 5275 gets tested again tomorrow and it wicks and then clearly holds, I will chase longs. Um, but until then, I'm actually a little bit more cautious and on the short side, if we get some really good consolidation overnight, um, then I will play the you know, I would expect us to fake break one way of that consolidation. And then if we broke back to the other side of that consolidation, I would play the short either down to 5240 or play the long up to 5333. I mean, this is a pretty well defined range that I'm anticipating on us having here. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking really to play in between here. I'm looking to get in a position in this 5320 to 5333 area or get in a position down here at 52.44 with the possibility of taking a lighter long around 52.75 if a retest, you know, happens to show up. But that's kind of what I'm waiting on right now. It's just very, very, uh, we're kind of in that decision mode of, okay, is it a bear market or is this just filling this volume of the CPI move? And it's just going to continue the uptrend. We just needed a breath, you know, to reload on longs for this next move up. Because, I mean, we were obviously very, very tired here. We couldn't make new highs. Finally made new highs that immediately just puked right off. So a pullback to 52.40 is really where I would like to, like, I want longs here. I really want to get into longs here. I'm okay on longs here. Um... And then I would really like shorts, like I said, up around 53.33. If we fail to kind of get over that, if we kind of come up there and it really looks weak and we really get that roundy top, um, I, would, I would not be against getting into short mode and, you know, shorting this down to 52.40. So, yeah, for, for right now, we're just kind of in wait and see mode and then we'll see in the morning how we want to play this. But that's kind of the edges of the ranges that we're looking at. So... You guys, please stay safe tomorrow. It's going to be Friday, and tomorrow is going to be a decision day, right? Today was a very clear, like, profit-taking event, high volatility day. Tomorrow is the decision day. Tomorrow is the day where the market decides, hey, are we bullish or are we bearish? And when the market is indecisive, you cannot expect to be decisive yourself. So protect yourself, take your stops, don't get married to anything. And just be ready for the market to be um, 
basically just a little crazy tomorrow. We finally got some volatility back. We're within the swing pro profile. We're not pushing all-time highs. So there's potential for really big moves tomorrow. But you also have to understand that, you know, the decision has to be made of whether or not we're bullish or bearish. So let the structure kind of form up overnight. Make a decision on, you know, do you want to go to 53.33 or do you want to go to 52.44? And then, you know, play yourself in the best kind of risk standpoint from there. So we'll, we'll see what transpires and we'll talk a little bit more in the morning. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to write some stuff up on, uh, on the, the trade plan and then we'll go from there. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe. Breathe. And do not get liquidated going into the weekend. I swear to gosh, if any of you get liquidated going into the weekend, I'm just going to be so sad. It's going to ruin my whole weekend. So for me, don't get liquidated. Take your stops. Be patient. Don't get over leveraged. Stay within your sizes. And we will see you guys, I guess, not even on Sunday because we have Memorial Day on Monday. So I will see you guys Monday night for our trade plan on Tuesday and we'll also review any trades we took on Friday. And yeah, I will see you guys then. Cover it in tin foil and leave set at room temperature for sure overnight. The tin foil locks in the moisture so that when you cut into it, the next day you have a super moist and delicious bread. And that's how you make the world's best banana bread. Eat banana bread, make.